Former UK Minister David Cameron once noted, excessive regulation constrains business, stifles job creation, and limits personal freedom. It is of importance that we heed his word and take decisive action to reduce the regulatory burden on manufacturers. The efforts initiated through the Presidential Task Force in 2013 are commendable, but more needs to be done. And urgent attention is required to ease this burden, fostering an environment where business can thrive and flourish. High cost of an instability of electricity. This is the usual talk we have. I don't know how now. We know there is a word called NATO, no action and talk only. We need to now act. For manufacturers, electricity is not just a utility. It is a lifeline powering production process and driving economic activity. However, high tariff and electric supply pose alarming challenges, hindering growth and undermining competitiveness. Consider the example. Now consider, listen to this. Consider an example of a steel plant burdened with a staggering electricity bill of 1.1 billion in 2023. 1.1 billion. A reduction in electricity tariff, such as providing manufacturers with a preferential rate of Kenya shillings, 10 kilowatt per hour, could yield substantial savings, empower companies to expand operation, create jobs, and contribute more to the economy. You know, it's a catch-22 situation. We want this. We want reliability power, power, and we want cost reduction. So the ch challenge is how do we match all this? And then there are contracts which have been given. We all know what has happened previously, unfortunately. So, but power is very essential and I think that can drive the country. And we have to, that power, is, should it be profit making? Should it be service provider? The loss is sustained and it is paid by the exchequer. Then we can take a bold step that what do we, and what are we going to achieve if we do this power? There must be KPIs. It cannot be just reduce it and then we enjoy. No. Let's be clear. Government does this. What is the private sector in manufacturing going to do? That is what I believe. So we can work together. Taxation remains a major concern for the private sector, particularly for manufacturing. While we appreciate the government effort in finalizing the national tax policy, we must address the troubling trend of imposing taxes on raw material, intermediate products, and packaging materials. We urge the government to explore alternative approaches to support targeted sectors and stimulate growth. I think the question is, do, do you know we have levies? The, the English language which we can get as Kenyans are fantastic. Export promotion levy for imports. Now this English word, I sometimes get baffled. You know, once taxes are low, you automatically get revenue. It's just but automatic. And when taxes are high, do you know how much is parallel economy Kenya? What you call black market? Do we know? That we need to understand. We know in the business what is happening and why it is happening and what can be done and how it can be done. But those are the bold steps to be taken. The roadmap to success. Overcoming this challenge requires concerted effort from both the public and private sectors. The roadmap to success. Kenya aim to propel Kenya's manufacturing through four key pillars. Export-led growth. Now, I will make it short. We have agreements with uh, uh, AFTA, African Continental Free Trading, Economic Partnership Agreement, European Union, AGOA, which is with the US. Now, all this leads to export. So, the story is that if we have export, what will it do good? There are three things simple, I'll put it. One is availability of foreign exchange, stability of Kenya shilling, and number three, excess capital. Every manufacturer sitting in this room will have about running at 60 to 65 percent, 25 percent excess capacity. So what will that do? I don't have to invest in machinery. I may have, I will create jobs. I'll pay the required taxes, and I will I will be able to utilize my capacity. So it's a very simple gum same some game that we need to work on, and then you can see the growth happening. SME development. As we know, SME is very important, and I think every country that goes through, there are a lot of SMEs. How do we support seriously? 
I, I think sometimes we need to follow example of India taxation and understand some of the SAPs up to certain level of business there are no taxes applicable. Let them grow. That is the idea. So we need to consider what do we want from the SME and how do we support them. That is the most important question. Throughout history, ladies and gentlemen, industrialization has served as a rapid driver of economic growth. Uh, as evidenced by the experiences of nations ranging from the US, United Kingdom, the rest of Europe, Asia, as we have seen countries coming up, uh, South Korea and others. And uh, Kenya's pursuit of industrialization underscores the need to sustain high economic growth amid its demographic challenges. As we all know, one of the challenges that we have as Africa is with our population of 1.3 billion people, we account for 17% of the world population. So one of the challenges that we have as Africa and as Kenya is that while we account for 17% of the world's population, our share of manufactured products globally is only 3%. So we are punching below our weight. If we compare this with Europe, for example, the, 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 uh, the, the, European, the seven, 27 European countries, EU countries, account for 9% of the world population. But their share of manufactured products is 24%. That is one challenge. If you look at the other challenge, is intra-Africa trade, and we are working on that. That when you look at the intra-European trade, goods and services traded within the EU up to the level of 70% of all goods and services traded within the EU are made within the EU. When you come to Africa, my dear brothers and sisters, intra-Africa trade only accounts for 15%. Now it has grown a little bit to 17%, meaning that 85% of our business we are doing with other people. There's nothing wrong with that. But then because we don't, our manufacture, share of manufactured products only 3%, it means that this 85% really represents imports from other regions because we have nothing to export. So I am very happy that we have this ambitious plan to try and turn around uh, that issue because that becomes uh, a big, big uh, issue that we need to address. Industry has a responsibility to create stable value chains. As much as you de-risk your business, you must be able to de-risk the business of your suppliers of raw materials. I have, I have given an example of other markets. If you go to the US today, the wheat that will be produced in 2029 has already been bought. We know the price we will pay. We know the quality we will deliver. But here, we are all waiting for the farmer to produce. If I overproduce, then you punish me for that. Then I stop producing, then you buy very expensively. So it is, I've talked to Job, to Job here. Can we work with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Trade? I know we have COMEX today, that simply, and we also have the warehouse receipt financing. I see you talking about agriculture for industry. There is already warehouse receipt financing. What is CAM doing about working with warehouse receipt financing to stabilize supplies, to stabilize prices, because nobody benefits. All of us lose when these prices go up and down. I see here a number of ask, uh, so many ask, including even the ask of giving a five-year tax a task moratorium on MSMEs to enhance cash flow and stuff. And I was telling my good friends, we need to create a conducive environment. But if we say that we are giving tax moratorium, what will happen to us? We will shut down as a government. But what you can help us as manufacturers is to supporting MSMEs let them become your local suppliers, build their capacity so that we can then broaden the tax 
base. If we broaden the tax base, obviously and automatically, we are going to ease the levels of taxation at your level because now we'll spread out to as so many entities as possible. And how do you have to support and support especially my sector? Is so as you know we have Agpo. I've seen here you're tr you're tracking Agpo, but you see even in the private sector we also want to track you. We also want to request you to also provide some sort of affirmative action, preferential access to some of the opportunities within your companies, so that is not just access to government procurement in in government alone, but also in the private sector. Are we setting aside 30 percent? If we say 30 percent is the is is the standard that you want to go with, let's also see the same from the private sector. <laughs> yetu sasa Ghana tumeanza kufungua biashara huko South Africa eh, DRC pia tumekuwa na challenge ya logistics na vitu kama hizo but, but ni kitu tunashukulikia na tunajua hiyo ni inji kubwa eh, iko na thamana kubwa vitu zingi mingi ambazo tunatengeneza hapa Kenya ni vitu ambazo wanahitaji wana so sasa ni sisi kama inji vile tumesema tutengeneze vitu kama ile export warehouses huko E, na pia kwa sababu wanaongea kifaransa pia tuchanuke kidogo unajua shida ya sasa sisi tunatengeneza kama ni machani alafu tunaweka kwa kiingereza sasa kifika huko na kuwa shida ile kitu tumeambia watu wetu kama ni machani kama ni kahawa unataka kuuza huko pia tuanze kuweka label kwa kifaransa ili mtu akitaka kutumia hiyo machani ama kahawa ama kitu kingine yoyote e, aweze kusoma kwa rais so, so through e Kenya branding agency tumewaambia ya kwamba e, tu, tujaribu kuangalia soko kama tunauza kwa warabu tuweke label yetu kwa kiarabu kama tunauza Japan namna hiyo tukienda namna hiyo tutauza vitu zetu rais yes you know from last year we introduced the import levy on products that are imported in Kenya and products that we can make here so we already put uh, import levy on cement on uh, on on steel and already we have collected over 200 million the idea behind that money is that then we use it to establish what we are calling an industrialization fund which is a money that you can use to borrow if you want to start a factory in Kenya. So, so what we are saying, okay, if you are importing something that we can make, we are not going to stop you, but we will tax it in such a way that the money we make will help us to create our own local industries uh, in, in those kind of sectors. So that's what is happening.